Uh, one of the big flips that's taking place in our time is the changeover from the eye to the ear. And uh, most of us, having grown up in a visual world, are now suddenly confronted with the problems of living in an acoustic world, uh, which is, in effect, a world, world of simultaneous information. information. The, visual, the visual world has very peculiar properties, and the acoustic, the acoustic world, world has, has quite, quite different, different properties. properties. The visual world, which belongs to the old 19th century, and which uh, had been around for quite a while, say from the 16th century anyway, uh, the visual world has the properties of being a sort of continuous and connected and homogeneous, all parts more or less alike, and static. Things stayed put. If you had a point of view, that stayed put. The acoustic, the acoustic world, world, which is, which is the, electric the electric world, world of simultaneity, simultaneity has, has no continuity, no, no homogeneity, homogeneity, no connections, and no sense. Everything's changing. So that's quite a big shift. I mean, to move from one of those worlds to the other is a, a very big shift. It's, it's, it's the same shift that Alice in Wonderland made to know when she went through the looking glass. She moved out of the visual world into the acoustic world when she went through the looking glass. And Plato developed his highly systematized philosophy, even more systematized later by Aristotle, his philosophy of the ideas and the idea of rational control of the passions and of the world of nature. Now, this Platonic universe of abstract truth and abstract ideas is inconceivable without the phonetic alphabet. This alphabet gave people some very strange habits, too. It filled people with the idea of imperial domination. Western man, with his alphabet, has always felt it mandatory that he impose it upon all other people. He must spread civilization by spreading literacy in all directions. Now, the Romans were the great implementers of this technology. They seized upon this form of writing to codify their laws and to make them uniformly applicable to all men. The idea that civilization, meaning a visually organized set of rules and laws for men in general, the idea that such a thing should be spread to all nations coincided with the rise of Christianity. As far as I know, Christianity has exactly nothing to do with the Greco-Roman idea of civilization. And so it is very mysterious that Christianity should have undertaken the job of spreading Greco-Roman alphabet. At the present time, the church is very doubtful about the matter of spreading Greco-Roman ideas any further than they've gone, and the third world doesn't want them. The third world doesn't want Greco-Roman Hellenistic institutions. The third world being the non-literate world. So, it's helpful to know the origins of the alphabet and of civilization and rationality in that sense, because we have come in the 20th century to the end of that road. And it's a considerable revolution to have been through 2,500 years of phonetic literacy, only to encounter the end of the road. Right now, the people in this room are making the decision whether or not we're going to have any more literacy or any more civilization in the 20th century, or whether it's going to stop right here.